super quick video today. We're going to be talking about color correction and LUTs and how you can make your camera go from this to this. Before we get started though, my name is Andrew. I am a filmmaker, content creator, and a streamer on Twitch. If you want to see more of these videos, give me a like and comment down below. And also give me a follow on all my social media, which will be down in the doobly-doo at the bottom. Have you ever set up your camera and your lights and made your room look all pretty, only to realize when you look through your camera or in your software, things look a little bit gray and washed out and quite frankly, a little bit boring? Well, the best way to fix that is by using color correction and LUTs. You may be wondering what a LUT actually is. Well, a LUT stands for look up table and that basically means that it's a filter that goes on top of your footage or in your software program that tells that program to change the colors, the values of the color to make it look different in some way. Take this red for example, it looks like a standard ordinary red, however if I add a LUT to it I can now make it less saturated or more saturated or even change the color of it slightly by adding things like more blue to the red. This is basically what a LUT does to your overall image and that's why things will look different when you use one. That sounds all well and good, however the next question is how do you actually make a LUT and then import it into your stream software to use with your DSLR or mirrorless camera or even your webcam. And yes, I did say webcam, you can use it on any camera or actually any input that you want to use within that software. Okay, so to be able to do this, you're gonna actually need some kind of photo editing software. Personally, I'm going to be using Photoshop, but you could use Lightroom, or if you can't afford the Adobe suite of things, you could even use free software such as GIMP. First things first, you're gonna need an image to manipulate so that you can tell your LUT what you want it to look like when it is finally done. So here, I'm using OBS, well, I'm using Streamlabs OBS because my actual OBS studio is recording this entire thing, but you're gonna have to go into here, find your camera, which is obviously I'm using an A7 III right now, make sure that all your filters are turned off so that you don't have any color correction or anything added in there, and then take a screenshot of this. Personally, to make things look a little bit better, I like to right click my image, then choose create output projector. Make sure that that is full screen so I get the right, like full quality of my camera, then print screen it so I get everything everything in shot properly and it's a little bit higher quality and easier to edit. Obviously, when that's done, the next step is to go and find that screenshot, find where you saved it and then open it with the software, the photo editing software of your choice. Nebula says hi, by the way. Okay, this next section is obviously the fun part of the video. You get to manipulate and play around with the image. You can add some saturation, some contrast, change the hue, even make it black and white if you want to. Play around, make sure that your image looks as good or however you want it to look, and then we'll move on to the next bit, which is making it into an actual LUT that OBS can recognize. So to find where the generic default LUTs are put on your computer when you install OBS, you're gonna have to go into the hard drive where you've installed OBS and then search through program files, OBS Studio, data, OBS plugins, OBS filters, and finally, you'll find some LUTs. I understand that's a lot of things to go through. You could kind of just type in LUTs in the search bar and it'll probably show up eventually. But I just thought I'd show you exactly where it is, at least for OBS Studio. I will put down below, maybe in the pinned comments or in the description, where it will be for Streamlabs OBS. And then when you've done that, when you've done that, grab this original one and open it with whatever you are editing the images with. So once you've opened that in your photo editor of choice, you'll end up with an image like this. This may look a little bit overwhelming to start with, I understand that, but it's a square full of squares and colors. But this effectively will be telling OBS what colors are what. So your reds are red, your greens are green, and your blues are blue. However, I want to tell it to look exactly like how I've edited my image. So to do that, you want to go to your other image, hopefully you've still got it open, hopefully, um, and copy the filters over onto the original LUT. So I've got mine here. I did all mine individually on adjustment layers just to make it a little bit easier for me. So if I take all these layers and adjustments, copy them, take them over to this one, and then paste them on top, you'll notice that it looks a little bit different, a little bit more vibrant and colorful and, well, things have changed. So we're pretty much done now. All that's left to do is for you to export it as a PNG, save it somewhere you're gonna remember, and then I will show you how to import it into OBS or Streamlabs OBS so you can use it when you stream. So to add this look to OBS or Streamlabs OBS, basically you're gonna have to open the program, go down to the camera which you're using. Obviously I'm using the a7 III again. So open filters, press this little plus button, Open this menu, or the drop down anyway, scroll down until you find apply LUT, click that, 
name it however you want to name it. I'm going to leave it as just apply look for now. Press done and then find it here. Next thing to do is to press browse and find where you saved the LUT. My LUT here is test LUT. Press it and then open it. As you can see, it's completely changed my image. I, when I was doing this for the sake of examples, I kind of went a little bit overboard with the LUT. One of the things that I will say when doing this is please don't go overboard, keep it kind of subtle. However, if you do go a little bit overboard with it, you can use this amount slider to bring it down. So obviously mine's a bit ridiculous. So if I bring it down to like 50% or so, it's not too bad at all. See that that's now my image, which isn't terrible. And that's the difference with it on or off, on, off. Obviously this whole process isn't exactly the most complex of things, but it is a good way to improve the quality of your streams it makes your images look a little bit better and obviously improves the cameras that you're using because they're not all designed to look this good or constantly look this good they're designed to be edited and made to look better in post but adding a lot kind of edits it on the fly to make it look better and will overall improve your look of your stream generally anyway that's me done for the day hopefully you enjoyed this and learned a few things along the way remember to make this personalized to you don't copy everything i'm specifically doing add your own personality and style to this and hopefully your stream will look better because of it. If you have any questions or queries though, don't forget to give me a comment down below, like the video if you did like the video and subscribe if you want to see more things like this. I'll see you all in the next one though. Have a good one. Night Owl out. Peace! Why am I doing that? I don't know. I'm not sure I can do the Yoda voice. I'm trying. I'm trying my best. Mmm, the sir has a good point in this. <laughs>